everybody. Um, welcome to our final Security Hub unconference session about the uh, Tag Security Supply Chain Security Working Group. Um, it looks like we just have a few folks at the end of the conference here, so if folks want to kind of gather in the middle to help with, with discussion, if you're interested in getting in. Yeah, it looks like you're all mostly there, just, just to find a, find a spot in the room. Um, so yeah, welcome. And so we're first going to talk a little bit about what we do as the supply chain working group of the TAG. And um, we've been having some conversations recently about what's next for, for this group. And so we figure this is a great chance to um, have a conversation about that. Um, do you, does anyone want to start with what we do, our mission? Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, so um, the mission of the supply chain uh, working group is just sort of a subset of tag security, right? If tag security is focused on cloud native security, then hey, uh, the supply chain working group is focused on the subset of uh, cloud native security that's focused on um, the supply chain. So that's both securing the cloud native supply chain as well as looking at securing just supply chains in general in cloud native, uh, using cloud native approaches. Yeah, so um, we've been working on a couple things recently. I'll let John talk about an effort he's been running in, in the um, working group, and then I'll talk about mine, and we'll talk about what's next. <laughs> All right, uh, so one of the most recent things we did was uh, a paper that we, you know, a lot of the work we'd done before was very technical, and it was, in some senses, aspirational of the, what the ideal solutions to a lot of supply chain security concerns are. And we found uh, talking you know, out and about at different open source groups or with customers that we, we work with who are concerned about supply chain security, that at the highest levels of those organizations, they don't really understand the problem in a way that allows them to help their company solve that issue. And, you know, one of the, the kind of typical things we'd heard are things like, well, we have S-bombs, doesn't that fix everything? Or, you know, if I have all these vulnerabilities in a vulnerability scan report, what do you mean there's false positives? Like, people don't understand the complexity of this and the amount of time and effort it's gonna take to really fix things. So um, we, wrote, we tried to write as short as possible uh, executive level summary of supply chain security, kind of laying out some of the, the concerns and the problems and an approach to solve them. And one of the things that um, I think is more useful in uh, conversations in that realm is how we tie this back to uh, business level concerns and how solving supply chain security can actually help improve the business, how you can deliver software faster by following best practices, having things more automated. If you if you have less CVEs, your engineers spend less time triaging CVEs. Like a lot of this stuff is very straightforward to us um, and may not be the things we talk about, but as someone higher in in an organization, those are the kinds of things you may be more concerned about. So as a bunch of engineers, we tried our best to try and up-level our, our thought process uh, in that way. Um, and we're gonna publish that soon. We wanted to wait a little bit after KubeCon so that it doesn't get quite, quite swept up in, in that whole thing. But uh, yeah, so that was the last thing. And then we worked on something else with Marina. Yeah, so the thing we've been, we've been um, working on recently is a uh, supply chain security tools mapping. So there's a lot of open source tools and closed source tools in the space of supply chain security that solve something in the supply chain. But really, you know, the supply chain is a lot of different steps, and so tools solve a lot of different pieces of the software supply chain. And so what we did was we took the um, supply chain best practices um, white paper that this group had put together, and we, we kind of split out the sections and looked at which tools actually address which sections of the white paper in kind of a, a matrix to see um, what solves what. And um, we're currently in the process of working with the CNCF to turn this into something more visual, more useful for people. So if they're trying to say, like, if, you know, how do I, what tools solve my software supply chain, the answer isn't one tool, it's look at all of these different ones. Um, and we focus a lot on open source tools just to, just to narrow it somewhere. and. Um, we're looking to make this like a first draft of this, and then of course, as new tools come out, as we, you know, I'm sure we missed some, we can add that all to some kind of a visual um, representation of that. So that's uh, another ongoing piece of work. And then I think we've been talking recently about um, what's next. And so I think one piece that um, that is definitely next is a rework of that 
um, Supply Chain Security Best Practices White Paper. It was written, I think, two or three years ago originally, and of course the space has changed a lot in that, in that time. So it's time to just take another look at that, do a, do a V2. Um, we're thinking in the new year, um, once folks are, are, are not taking as many holidays. Um, <laughs> do another, take another look at that. Um, and also looking at collaborations with the OpenSSF, working more on blog posts, sharing knowledge about software supply chain security. Um, and that's kind of what I want to ask the, the room um, today is if anyone else has things that, um, they, that we could do to help you in software supply chain or that you can do to help us get involved and um, solve this big problem. So I think Aditya is somewhere with a mic. He kindly offered to walk around if anyone has any questions for us, comments, ideas. Yeah. Hello. Okay. So it seems to me that um, it's become apparent to me that a lot of the times companies and even engineers are not willing to um, implement some, the technologies we work on until it's too late or um, when regulation actually, like when the government comes after them. So um, I, th I think um, it might be helpful to create something that not only, because like I think a lot of the efforts we're having right now is to educate the engineers, educate CISOs, educate uh, members of the, the community we talk about, like we're in. Um, however, is there any efforts in trying to educate those making the regulations, like someone at the NSA or, um, uh, or, the, or like any other uh, agencies that um, may be um, relevant, like that we could like help out? Yeah, so there's um, a bunch of RFIs uh, coming from uh, both NIST and CISA regarding a lot of uh, what you just sort of s said there of like, you know, w what are the big sort of open challenges in adopting these standards? They're looking for um, feedback from like uh, enterprises, from individuals, from um, uh, various projects. And, and so both the CNCF and OpenSSF uh, do respond to some of those. Sometimes it's on behalf of a working group. Um, sometimes it's on behalf of just the broader uh, uh, community. And so there's definitely a lot there. Um, that, that we're looking at and and I think uh, to kind of go back to this the when you talked about hey you know what about you know CISOs how can we inform them actually that's kind of the the purpose of that sort of executive summary and I think one of the key things there uh, a little bit is is um, you know in that document you know and and we've seen this actually uh, just pop up is like CISOs are being charged with crimes if they are attesting to things that are potentially, you know, materially inaccurate or potentially even lies um, uh, as well. And we are seeing, uh, you know, um, various insurance companies no longer, you know, actually protecting against these things. So now we're seeing CISOs taking it and just, you know, generally companies taking that problem a lot more seriously. And I think uh, for us, one of the big things, you know, that this group is looking to do is, is try and make that easier for then engineers to develop. Like the engineers are now getting that signal like, oh, uh, you know, I'm supposed to secure my supply chain. Okay, how do I do that and make this feature go out in time? Um, so that's, that's definitely something that, that I think we're looking for also a lot more end user feedback on, you know, what we can be doing uh, in the group to, to make that easier. You know, I, I think one of the other things is um, you mentioned government agencies, and uh, I think we could say they're watching. They're always watching. Um, but but uh, from a more serious, like, we've actually seen the cloud native, uh, the supply chain best practices and the reference architecture, architecture cited in things like SSDF. And I don't know if it was in the, the NSA uh, supply chain security guide, or I, I think it was. Um, but there's, we've seen multiple different government documents citing the work that we've done, which is a really cool thing. So a lot of the work that we've done in the past has been um, has been around sort of like the integrity of the supply chain, right? Um, and one of the things that's been occurring to me lately is that a massive proportion of the actual supply chain incidents that we're seeing take the form of like, for example, typo squatting and things that we're not able to solve with like signature verification, for example. Um, and I'm wondering if there's any work or things that we could work on that might address that particular problem set. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Yeah, because if someone asks to download a piece of malware, it's hard to, uh, you can securely have a supply chain that gets them th that piece of malware that they asked for. 
Um, <laughs> so I think this is, this is a, definitely one of the trickier problems in, in the field of software supply chain. I think it, it kind of can go back to um, how people are actually choosing to download packages, right? And I think that's something I think about a lot is like having sources of truth. Either it's just having typed it in a file once instead of typing, you know, like, I don't know, pip install package name. Um, and having to like type that every time, um, so you can have processes to to verify that. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely the kind of thing that we can include in, in our guidance. And so, yeah, that v, that white paper v two I think is a great place for that kind of discussion. So, oh, yeah, and, and I think one other thing to add add on there, and I think that we're seeing with. Um, provenance as being the first step is provenance helps you identify where it came from in the first place. And so, um, I mean, one thing that's at least lucky for right now is we're not seeing a lot of uh, uh, typo squatters and similar signing their packages, um, which, is, which is potentially a good thing. Um, but I think even if they were to sign it, you know, as we begin to sort of really look at the provenance problem a little bit more and, re and really try to tie those things back to known good maintainers, known good organizations, then you know you can kind of go back and say, hey, I downloaded a package and you know I checked a ton of the the attestations about that package and I can't seem to verify where it came from. So maybe I should take a closer look before actually installing it. Um, that's kind of I think the, some of the things that that we're we're starting to see in that in, in that space as well. Hey, yeah, so I've got a, a few things. Um, one of the things, so I, I think I've talked to a few people today about uh, the fact that I teach classes for SANS, and one of the things that we're adding is some supply chain security information, and I get all kinds of different students in my classes, some of which are newer to pipelines in general, and others that I would consider kind of almost like peers of myself, right, like people that are, are pretty expert. And um, something that would be really useful to me is to have uh, explainer materials that kind of start at a very high level and then continually get deeper. Uh, something like, I, I really enjoy like the five levels of complexity or something like explain it to a child, explain it to a teenager, explain it to a, you know, a, a graduate student, a doc, uh, expert, whatever. Um, but like some sort of bits of information like that, that's both, that that's um, communicated in different ways as well. So like potentially video explainers, those are, those are great, but also like text-based uh, explainers and things that would um, take this ecosystem from a very high level and then kind of dig into uh, different areas of it and let people kind of like choose their own journey. I think that'd be extremely useful. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. That's a great direction for this work. Um, yeah, and if you're interested in getting involved in that, especially if you have some experience creating them, that'd definitely be the kind of thing we could, we could collaborate on. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Let us follow up. Could you, uh, could you let us know What's the process to get involved? I mean, I've been running circles around this ecosystem for a couple of years now, and it's the first time I've come across this group. And yeah, that's a fantastic question. So, um, so we're the Software Supply Chain Working Group of TAG Security. Um, and so the easiest way to get involved with us is we have a meeting every Thursday, um, except, well, not today, but uh, every Thursday at, um, what is it, 1, 1 o'clock Eastern, right? No, that's no. 11. Oh, sorry, 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and you, I don't know what the time that is for you, but... <laughs> Hopefully you can make it to that time. Um, and we have a, a Slack channel, um, tag-security-supply-chain. Uh, Michael will pull it up and make sure I got that right. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, you can find us on, on Slack as well, asynchronously, if, that, if that's easier. Um, and I think a lot of the work we do goes through the tag security GitHub repo. We have a pro uh, specific project board for um, the working group, which we have um, been working on keeping more up to date. So hopefully. <laughs> That will that will reflect some of the work as well. Do, do you have that? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, so it is um, a tag security. Oh, so it's tag security supply chain WG, all dashes between the words. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, could you explain like the evolution of salsa and where you might see that going in the future? Uh, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll take that one since I'm on the Salsa Steering Committee. Um, so, uh, so Salsa, for folks who aren't aware, um, it's uh, security levels for, no, supply chain levels for, secu for software artifacts. I always get mixed up. Um, so it is a, uh, it, it's a um, framework, uh, 
a set of essentially requirements um, right now focused on the build, but it's focused on uh, supply chain security. And so right now um, it is focused on the build and around build provenance so that you know that a particular piece of software um, was built a particular, you know, it's a, was built a particular way against a particular source and then had this output. And it's essentially just a signed attestation making a claim about that. And so, uh, and then it's also some requirements around the build system to essentially enforce some of that. So uh, for folks who aren't, you know, super familiar, you know, like level one is essentially just recording the data about the build in a format that can then be consumed. Um, the second one is sort of signing that data so that you're associating that data with an identity. And then the third piece is some additional properties that are trying to prevent um, stuff like builds from mucking with other builds's provenance data, um, as well as some additional you know, things in there to prevent stuff like a build that goes malicious signing its own provenance and potentially also exposing signing secrets and those sorts of things. Um, in the future, you know, so that, that's kind of where it is uh, today and we're actually, we have a ton of work in progress on a couple of different threads. One is on some additional levels of the build. So some of it's like reproducible builds, um, potentially uh, there, there's um, uh, some folks from Intel and other places that are working on um, using stuff like trusted execution environments, secure enclaves, and those sorts of things to uh, uh, further attest the build where you can actually tie the build not just back to a piece of hardware, but also to a particular, um, you know, uh, a secure element of the processor. And then um, the other big thread that's happening right now is around source um, attestations. So these are things, and, and actually we have a, a Adichis here, you know, there's actually a lot of interest in looking at Git tough uh, for some of those things as well, where the idea now is like if you are attesting to the build and you are claiming that I pulled the code from this sort of place, can you actually now go back and verify, you know, who are the people who wrote that code? Um, what, was that code uh, committed by approved parties? Is somebody trying to impersonate somebody? Was uh, the code somehow manipulated without you know, uh, somebody else knowing. So that's kind of where um, things are kind of going. And then in the future, we're expecting um, a dependencies track most likely, as well as like a package track as well. Is there any work being done in the community around uh, provenance around AI workflows? Um, I, I'll also uh, talk about that one a little bit as well. So one of the ones is, uh, so, so far, at least in most of the, the Salsa community, we view that the AI models are by and large the same as software. So it's, uh, you know, if, if software is a little bit of data and a lot of bit of, you know, a lot of code, um, you know, uh, uh, machine learning and, and, and other models are a lot of data and a little bit of code. So um, yeah, the, we view it kind of the same, though there is some effort to kind of pull out a couple of key characteristics that might be a bit different, like, you know, uh, elements of the training data that are hard, you know, that are a little bit different than you would consider just like source code or something like that. And yeah, I think there's also effort more generally in um, the CNCF around AI and security. I think there's a, um, I don't remember exactly where it's sitting right now because, you know, it's a new, a new field, but some work happening around the intersection of those in some of the tags, so. I don't remember if it has a home yet in one of the one of the groups. <laughs> awesome. So one of the other things that you mentioned that I wasn't aware of was the supply chain uh, tool mapping. I was wondering kind of what state that currently is in. And without knowing anything about it, uh, one thing that I would like from it <laughs> um, is so I, I've been able to use like the SSDF a lot lately when I work with developers and DevOps teams because it has the examples column. Like it's great to have these Swiss Army knives that are extremely powerful and broad, um, but it's also really powerful to like make it hit home for somebody and have examples. And so that's something I would love to see, but I'd also love to know like what kind of what's going on there. Yeah, so the current status is we have a really big spreadsheet that has um, all the different elements of the white paper and a bunch of different open source projects and kind of then, the, then a, a somewhat sparse matrix of uh, places where these things intersect with like some amount of explanation in some cases or just like indication of 
which pieces each tool is addressing. And I think the next step with this project is really to turn that into something a little bit more usable. I think that, um, yeah, we're, we're getting some resources from the CNCF to, for some, some actual graphic designers, some front-end people who can help us make this better. And I think that's another great idea as, as part of that effort is um, as people like, click through um, whatever, whatever design that looks like, um, actually seeing you know, how, how these tools can be used for these particular problems that, 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 are, that are coming up. Yeah, that makes sense. Just like a follow-up, are you thinking like something more static, like a PDF or something interactive like a website? Or more something? like a website. Okay, um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so if anyone has experience with front-end development or things like that, we would love to have you contribute. Uh, service desk tickets with CNCF can take a while to get responded to. Um, but, I, but I do think, you know, one of the ideas we had talked about with this is also just getting different perspectives, right? So for us, as a bunch of people thinking about supply chain security all of the time, we may be fall a little bit further to the, the ops side of, you know, thinking about those concerns, but also really get the developer's perspective, trying to understand how different people are thinking about this. Um, and also the tools all meet different requirements and different number of requirements. And so, you know, we mapped all of the tools to the recommendations from the um, supply chain best practices paper. And we would like the interactive guide in theory to be able to kind of choose your own adventure as you go through. If you pick one tool that offers more security properties for, say, uh, your source code, then you don't need to choose another tool that does a smaller set of, of those types of things. And as you go through each step of your supply chain, picking, you know, being able to kind of create that holistic view with a set of tools that aren't overlapping. There's, uh, there's the open SSF who are doing security. There's the Confidential Computing Consortium. Then there's the whole um, set of folks at Cata containers and confidential containers and all those. And then there's you. And so is there an overlap between some of the work that's happening or is it all? Um, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, there is a lot of overlap and there's a lot of collaboration and there could be better collaboration. So as, as an example, I, I'm both a, a tag security lead as well as a member of the OpenSSF TAC. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of overlap and, and you know, I see John and Marina at a lot of also the, the open SSF meetings as well. And so there is a lot of collaboration there. There's still a lot more to be done. Um, you know, the, the confidential computing consortium is, is really kind of starting to move and there's a lot of, uh, I've been talking to a lot of the folks or we've been talking to a lot of the folks over there as well about like, Hey, where can we kind of collaborate on some of this to make sure that we're not all sort of reinventing the wheel? Like uh, inevitably like, Hey, you focus on the, the, the confidential compute piece and we'll kind of focus more on like the cloud native piece. And then the open SSF will think about it more broadly. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there. I think that we, uh, we're very interested, for example, if if anybody in the community notices like, hey, why, why are you folks working on that when this other team is? Oh, we probably just weren't aware, as, as I'm sure you, you, everybody knows, right? Like the LF has how many projects underneath it, how many foundations? So so inevitably there, there's, there's gonna be some, um, you know, conflict and confusion a little bit there, but I think uh, there's a lot there. And then on, as far as on the Kata containers and confidential containers space, um, you know, we've had a couple of conversations with them here and there, you know, there's a lot of stuff also in like, a, there's a thing called Key Lime, for example, which is around, you know, TPMs. And so there's definitely still a lot of those conversations uh, uh, happening as well. Sorry, I'm trying not to be a hog. Uh, um, so I guess kind of like a follow on to that, what, what does the interaction look like between the tax, your working group and, uh, like the Fresca project in OpenSSF? Uh, Is that so, still? Yeah. So, so, um, well, a couple things. Uh, one, just so folks know, Fresca is being archived just because it was more of a representative example and, and that sort of thing. Oh, so Fresca, yes. Uh, so for folks who are not familiar, uh, everybody should know about it now. Um, Fresca is, uh, it, it was essentially a, um, uh, an example implementation of the Secure Software Factory, which is a white paper that came out of, um, and I helped lead up, uh, that came out of uh, this group, the Supply Chain Working Group, and it was briefly you know, mentioned. And what it was, was it was taking the Supply Chain Best Practices work, uh, 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 white paper and looking at 
you know, one specific thing that a lot of folks were struggling with, which was the build, and trying to think about like what could the future of a very, very secure build look like. And so um, we were looking at all sorts of cloud native tools and technologies that could really, really help secure the build. So those were things like, at least at the time, you know, like Tecton and Tecton Chains, as well as uh, Spiffy Spire, um, eBPF tools like, um, uh, Falco and, and Tetragon and those sorts of things and seeing how you could potentially like line up a uh, 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 You know all that together and so Fresca was actually implementing all of those things um, But as I think everybody, you know, uh, or a lot of folks probably are keenly aware It's not the easiest thing to get folks to move off of let's say their Jenkins um, onto a new system so so uh, Largely it was used as an example and a lot of different folks at different companies actually cite it as like, hey, I was looking at what was going on in there, and then I figured out how to fit it into our, you know, um, our team city, into our blah, 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 and, 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 and uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I don't think we quite answered the, the interaction piece, right? And basically, oh, basically, it's that. It's that there was, like, this idea here, and then it turned into a project there, and we... Um, yeah, I mean, we, all, we, we I think most folks here were aware of, about the stuff going on in the OpenSSF around it, um, and tried to just like you know support each other, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess like part of it was I was wondering if there's going to be revisions to the white papers on one side, would it get ported over there? Or is, like if the project's pretty much destined for the the attic, then um, is there not going to be a like a tangible um, example of the white paper updates and things like that? Yeah, so I th I, I think on that front, um, so there's two things. W one is um, I think, uh, and one of the, the biggest uh, uh, pieces of sort of advice um, I've been given about, you know, just sort of open source projects in general is that it's very difficult to start a new code project um, within just, let's say, a working group. It's much easier for folks within the community, whether it's other organizations, um, other companies, to come together, build a thing, because obviously, um, you, know, every, uh, you know, folks are trying to sort of make money on it or whatever, and then saying, hey, let me contribute that back because, you know, we see it as a good fit to this, the CNCF. Um, so I think on that end, like, if there are folks who are interested in developing those tools, I think we are still, you know, definitely down to sort of build some interesting examples, but we found, at least for us, a lot more success in building the white papers, building those sorts of things, and, and a couple of, like, you know, short examples, those, that sort of stuff, but seeing sort of other groups, whether they are coming from the academic space, um, other sort of larger nonprofits that are sort of dedicated purely to writing code or to sort of the, um, you know, private companies coming in, looking at the white papers, implementing those things, and then, it, you know, contributing that code back to, uh, you know, the CNCF or um, another uh, open source foundation. Awesome, thanks. What, one more question in this sort of vein here, which is just like, is there a, um, is there any sort of formal distinction in terms of the scope of OpenSSF's works on this in this realm and CNCF's, uh, the tag security or the or the supply chain working group, and like uh, not necessarily how they interact, but like is there is there sort of different emphases or different distinctions in terms of what their their scopes and purviews are? Yeah, I think that it's mostly defined. I think in the individual uh, charters of both groups. I think the the biggest thing I think that we try to do is think about um, the cloud native angle on software supply chain security or more broadly in tag security on, on security um, to try and like reduce those kind of, not conflicts, but we don't wanna duplicate work. In, there's limited resources in open source, right? There's no need to, <laughs> to do the same thing twice. Um, that's the way I think about it at least. Yeah, I, I think our group is, is relatively small. I, I think we have five or six people maybe show up on, on a regular week and it, it's a good week. Um, the OpenSSF is a large organization and uh, they have many different working groups focused on things from uh, best practices for security tooling, uh, how to generate SBOMs everywhere. Uh, there's an entire group focused on supply chain integrity, which has different subgroups underneath that. They're starting to take in uh, different projects, uh, sandbox projects like GitTuff is actually a project in OpenSSF. Um, SBOMIT is another one. And that's that's like 
maybe in the broader ecosystem, an interesting thing that we're seeing as well of the you know, projects like that that are based off of CNCF projects like Intoto and the update framework crossing these boundaries back and forth. And I think that as individuals, uh, the group is the pe group of people working on this are doing a really good job of understanding both spaces. But I definitely think at the, the foundation level, there could be a little more willingness to collaborate across those group and be supportive of each other. Yeah, and I think one thing to quickly add there, you know, I think a little bit um, more specifically, right, like the, the sorts of things that I think you'll see within our group is stuff focused on, as, as Marina mentioned, around the cloud, but like, so containers around like, you know, Kubernetes and, and container orchestration, service meshes, workload identities and all that sort of like, you know, uh, serverless, uh, you know, WASM and, and, and those sorts of things, whereas, I think in OpenSF, you will see some of that as well, more from a, a breadth perspective than a depth perspective, right? You'll see just sort of lots of stuff, but you'll also see folks talking about just sort of, you know, general memory safety. And, and as sort of, um, as John had mentioned there, right, like just SBOMs generally, right? Whereas we might be focused a little bit more on how to generate SBOMs for containers.